Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Half and Half this morning. Um, I was thinking today it might be nice to start standing up. Uh, I don't know. Scott always gets to start standing up, and I thought, well, maybe I want to start standing up. Um, you know, Pilates is so much about strengthening your postural muscles, these core muscles, and thinking about your breath and lining up your spine. Um, and the mat work, especially, you often don't get to that standing position. Um, you do a lot of it lying on your back or lying on your stomach or side. Um, but we do want to bring all the stuff we do into standing work, which do I know you do it with your, Scott when we get to Movement Lab. But um, I think it would be nice, too, to start with a little bit of standing ideas. So we're going to start with your feet a little open, the toes pointing kind of comfortably out. Um, and just find a position that feels sort of comfortable. Um, and then bend your knees and take a look down at your knees and make sure that they're going right over your toes. And I'm not bent very far. I'm in sort of a, sometimes Scott likes to call this the Yosemite Sam position, which I think is a good image. It's like just a little bend in the knees, right? It's not necessarily like a photo shoot shot. But this place right here my feet, I can feel my feet a little more. And I can actually kind of maneuver a little bit and feel like one foot and the other foot, and maybe go forward and back, and get a sense of that. And maybe your quads are working a lot. And all the time in Pilates, when you're lying on your back, talking about releasing your hips and using your belly. So in this position right here, could you do just a little less with your quads by imagining that tension releasing and going down into your feet and just a little bit of tone in your abdominals. Now, as I do that, I just naturally start to bend a little more. You may or may not do that, but that's happening for me. And then starting to rotate the thighs a little more open. They kind of want to open up a little bit as opposed to kind of pulling in this way, which sometimes happens. So all that happened <laughs> and then stretch your legs again like reset it and then do the same thing. So find Yosemite Sam. I can't remember his tagline. All I can think of is foghorn leghorn. I, I don't know. I, he just did this a lot. Someone can tell me. And then see if you can feel your feet and release your quads a little more and find your low belly a little more. Maybe that lets you bend a little deeper into it really open through the inner thigh place, and then press back up. One more time. It's a little exploration. You might be in a position like this if you were bending over to lift up a box or something. This is a position we sometimes end up in. This kind of movement in the thighs, letting the feet release a little more, finding the belly a little more, the inner thighs lengthen out a little more. The thighs rotate a little more. And then pressing to straight. And then come to a parallel position with the feet pointing forward. And kind of the same thing in a parallel position. Bend your knees a little. See if you can kind of maneuver your weight on your feet side to side, forward, back. Notice if you get a lot of gripping in your quads, or sometimes it's like if you start to feel pressure in your knees, that usually means there's some gripping in your quads. Could you release some of that? Think about your feet a little more. At the same time, could you find your little bit of lower abdominal feeling? And then one more idea, could you relax in your lower back? Just a touch, just like, you turned your tension knob down a little bit in your lower back. All of that lets your feet spread into the floor a little more. For me, like I said, it often makes my knees bend a little more because they relax a little bit. They're not fighting so much. And press to straight. So just play with it a little bit. Bending your knees. Take whatever time you need. Maybe you bend a little more and come back up. The whole time my heels are staying down. So if your heels start to come up, your quads are doing too much. I release into that 
bend. In dance classes, we call this a demi-plie. Which is like half bend, I think. I don't know if half is right. Bend is, I think, what it is. I might be totally wrong. I always have my French wrong in terms. <laughs> And then coming back up. Okay, so now we're going to add the roll down to that, which we do standing roll down all the time in here. Um, but with that feeling that, you know, as you start to roll down, very often when you get about halfway down, you might feel all those same things we were just working on. Your quads start to tighten up. Your back starts to tighten up. Everything starts to stiffen as you go. And could you use that same feeling we just worked on standing that as you get about halfway down that you release all that stuff a little more you find your feet you release your quads you release your back maybe your knees bend a little more to go all the way down and then once you're at the bottom if you want to feel that little bit of stretch in your hamstrings you could stretch your legs a little bit that would be just fine they don't have to be all the way straight but if it feels good to do that you can do that but then let's go back to the other feeling to roll up. Bend your knees, try to relax in your quads and your lower back, feel your feet. And as you roll up, you get a little deeper feeling of that bend in your knees until you're all the way back up. As the head comes up, the legs, the knees straighten. So play with that feeling a little bit. The knees bend, you start to roll down. Somewhere in that halfway down point, you probably have to re-feel the release. Recreate that image. Once you're all the way down, you might do a little stretch. And then refine everything. Knees bend, quads soften, feet spread out, low, low belly helping you. Maybe you bend a little more as you go halfway up. And then we're going to do one more to roll down and stay down. And then once you're down this time, hang out there a little bit more. However you like, knees can be however bent or straight. Helps you release your back and release your quads. And then maybe also release your hamstrings. And then in whatever way you like, come down to the floor. I'm going to just go to hands and knees to transition down to the floor. Okay, so there's a couple things about what we just did that I um, really like that are concepts that I like. Uh, one is just the basic cueing that I was talking about. Can you connect the quads releasing with a deep low belly with the lower back releasing with your feet? Like all those things. Can we sort of in, in an embodied way feel all those things? But another concept I really like about what we just did is the idea that um, the dynamic aspect of things. So I don't find my perfect cue, do a movement, and then let go of my cue. That things move, things change. I get about halfway down and I have to kind of reorganize. Even though my image is the same thing, because my weight has changed, I have to check in again. And then uh, the way I find that image, the way I experience that image, it shifts a little bit. And this is always true in movement. There's always sort of a dynamic. It's not like a hold and then do something. It's a dynamic relationship of how we feel those things, how they change, which is also just makes me like really excited. I think that's really just like beautiful in the body. It's a really beautiful thing um, that things are in motion. I'm a big motion fan. Um, but it's cool too. It's just like interesting um, that things have movement to them. So we're going to do the same movement. We're going to play with that same idea uh, now in the roll-up. 
on the floor. So it's the same, same movement we just did standing. Now it's harder because we're not standing. But I'm going to think, okay, nice, open, long feeling in the quad, open lower back, using the lower belly, and feel when things change, right? Because somewhere a third of the way down to three quarters of the way down, it's, it's different. I have to get even longer in my quad. My quad wants to jam up. I have to work even deeper in my belly. Holding your legs is just fine to help you. Once you get to the mat, how do things kind of reorganize? So I've got this nice feeling in my lower body. Now I'm going to start to come up as my head comes up. There's a moment my quads want to come on. Can I just keep reaching, keep drawing the low belly in? Use the hands to help you keep that feeling. Keep opening the lower back. And then coming back down again, same idea. Feet are heavy, belly draws back. Get about halfway down, hold for a moment, check in again. Find it a little more, keep going. And then coming up, same thing. Set the feeling, the image in your body. Lift your head, feel what happens. Find it again and keep going. So we'll take just a couple more on your own. Keep breathing. Pause when you need it. If you'd like to work without your hands on your legs, if that feels like a good challenge, um, and you can still work with this organizing, reorganizing, then, then that's a great option. And take it one more time until you're ending on your back. And then let everything settle however you like. You can stretch your legs out, take a couple breaths here. And then we're going to go into the 100. And the, the way we work with the same concept in the 100, these two concepts that I'm putting together, one is more this kind of image of the quads in the back and the belly, and the other being uh, feeling how to, how to reissue the image, how to recreate the image as you go. So what's interesting about the 100 is it's a static position, right? But still, I'm sure that you have felt you do the first four, and then on the fifth one, your quads tighten up or something like that, right? Like it changes. Partly what's changing, even though you're in a still position, is that you're inhaling and then you're exhaling. And that whole movement of inhale and exhale means your body is like kind of rediscovering through the whole inhale and through the whole exhale how to maintain this work we're trying to feel. So it's just a thought. We're going to go into the hundred. We're just going to see if you can observe some of that happening. So back on your back and then go ahead and take your legs up right away. Let your knees open slightly and then heels together, toes apart, and then hold on to the backs of your legs. So we're a little Yosemite Sam-ish, just a little bit in that open position. And then once you're holding your legs, you know, you might already feel your quads working a lot. You, you're not the only one if you do. But if you hold your legs, can you get some of that to ease up? 
Can you feel your lower back a little more? Can you feel your low belly a little more? And then keep holding on, bring your head up. And as you're holding on, again, I think that makes it to get the quads to release, to get the low belly to engage, do a little check-in maybe with the ribs to lower back releasing. Now one hand reaches forward, maybe one hand, or maybe you wanna pump with both hands, either way is fine. And then we're just gonna practice, inhale five, exhale five. And I often reissue the image on the exhale. So I inhale, exhale, belly, quads, lower back. Inhale, exhale. So I deepen into all that work every time I exhale. And for me, as I keep deepening into the work, sometimes it changes my position a little. Sometimes I realize, oh, I wanna bend the knees a little more to find that. Other times I start feeling how, as my belly comes on more, I feel like I could support a straight leg more. Two more. And last one. And then resting down. And come up to sitting. So um, sidekicks, we're gonna go to sidekicks. Um, and I, I just, I don't know, I'm getting very excited. So for the sidekicks, um, I think this is a really interesting one to explore this feeling because as my leg goes forward in the side kicks, I have to stabilize in a totally different way because all my weight is in front of me. And as my legs come together, I'm in my most stable position. And as my leg goes behind me, I have to stabilize internally in a different way, right? Like even though I'm thinking about the same things, I just have to organize a little differently. I don't just like hold it like this. It, it has a sense of play and, and reorganizing as I go. So if you were thinking, I don't remember what the sidekicks is, what's she talking about? I can show you that same thing. So lying on your side with the head up or the head down, doesn't matter, up to you. I'm gonna do head down today. My feet are a little bit forward uh, on my mat towards the front part of my mat. My body's lined up with the back edge of my mat. Okay, so sometimes I like to say, if you know physics and engineering, this will make sense to you. Um, but then I don't know how to explain it in engineering terms, but I know there's some sort of physics basic basis to this. So when my leg is right over my other leg, that's the most stable position, right? I'm not having to work to hold the weight of my leg. Uh, as much as I will when my leg goes in front of me or behind me. So here I am. It's not, I mean, it's, I have to use some muscles, but as far as my abdominals go, they don't have to do a ton uh, in this position as much as they will when I go forward and back. And see if you can feel this. As you go forward, your leg gets heavier and heavier. It gets harder and harder to keep it from falling towards the floor or from trying to counterbalance by shifting your butt backwards. I have to work more and more in my belly to be able to hold the weight of that leg as it goes forward. As soon as my legs get back one on top of the other, oh, it's not as much work. Then it starts becoming work again as my leg starts moving behind me. I have to work more and more in order to not have my ribs go forward and my butt go back. So I have to really hold in the belly more as my leg gets farther back. Here's this transition moment. My belly doesn't have to work quite so hard. Starts working harder. 
Maybe you feel it in your hand pressing harder too. Sometimes that's true. Maybe you feel it in your bottom leg tightening up. Could you instead just keep feeling it in your belly? And notice how you have to deepen a little more as the leg gets farther forward. And as the leg gets a little farther behind you. And working with that feeling. Exhaling. And so some of what I'm asking you to do here is not be super focused on the end range, right? Sometimes we go, I'm at point A, now I'm at point B, now I'm at point A, now I'm at point B. But what I'm asking you to think about is like, ooh, what happens in between point A and point B? How am I organizing as I go? So that I'm as strong as I need to be by the time I get to the end. Two more. And then bring your legs together and just relax in there. And press up to sitting and we'll go to the other side. So feet are on the forward part of the mat, bodies on the back edge of the mat. Rib connection drawing together. Last week we did the shoelace tying your ribs together with the shoelace feeling. Maybe that image makes sense to you. A little bit of lower belly feeling. Not too much in the quad. Leg comes up, you hold it just like you were standing hip distance apart now. Be here for a moment, right? So we have hip over hip, body super organized and steady. Even though this is work, it's a little easier than when I get all the way forward or all the way back. And then start to notice that feeling as you take your leg forward, work your belly more. As your legs come together, work your belly, but it's just not holding as much weight. As it goes back, work your belly more. Trying to hold your position really steady. Working through the neutral spot feels a little different as you go forward. And holding your torso still, using the belly. And you might still be feeling that easy lower back, long quad, low belly. Two more. And then bring everything together, take a little rest, just relax everything. Okay, so one more we'll look at. Um, and I think these are getting progressively harder in, in different ways. Um, these are all like different 
different types of movements we make, but um, we're going to go into SWAN. And what I find in SWAN is people, um, if they've got it in their belly, it's great and it's not super hard. But if they struggle, if you struggle and it tends to pinch in your lower back, it can be really hard to figure SWAN out and to get yourself pushing all the way up. Um, it can be really challenging to make that happen. So we're going to look at SWAN lying on your stomach and start with that feeling of... So hands are by your shoulders or wherever you like them for swan. If you like them wider, that's just fine. But start with that feeling of the quads are pretty long and relaxed. The lower abdominals have a little bit of lift to them. Like you're pulling your belly up off your t-shirt. The lower back feels pretty long in this position. Now, I think also useful here is to feel the ribs drawing in. So hopefully you have a sense of this in this position. Okay, ribs, belly, long, easy, low back, long quads. Now just do a little test for yourself. As your head comes up, when is the moment that you want to lose one of those things? Because everybody's got it. Even if you don't lose it, when's the moment you want to? For me, right here, my ribs want to flare. That's what once I just I want to let that go right here. Come back down. There have been times in my life that right as my head came up, my lower back came on and I lost my belly. So that's another thing that might happen, right? Any any of these things could happen. So just play with it. Play with the test a little bit next time you come up. How where's that transition moment where you have to recreate that feeling again, a little more ribs. That's what I do right here. Ah, draw it in a little more. That helps me keep all the other stuff. And for me, that moment lets me come all the way up. As I go down, same thing. There's a moment where, oh, it just wants to collapse. So I'm gonna see, how do I have to keep working? And then it sort of gets easier to keep all that working. So no, no um, expectation that you have to come all the way up. You might be playing in a lower range. Instead, the goal is just to feel, okay, where's the place where I have to find it again? And once I find it again, does that let me come up higher? Maybe I just come to here, that'd be fine. And coming back down. And so again, your four things, low belly, not pinching your lower back, drawing your ribs together, and keeping the quads relaxed. And just try one more time. And then as you finish that, press back to child's pose. Take a couple breaths there. And then you're welcome to stay there if you're enjoying that. Scott and I are gonna switch places. You can also come up and look at your screen as you're ready. Hi, everybody. So let's start off on hands and knees. So a bit of a continuation of that theme. And taking a moment to check to see that your fingers point straight ahead and that the weight is evenly distributed on your hand. So for most of us, because of particular tightness, the weight tends to fall onto the little finger side of the hand. <clears throat> so make sure there's as much weight on the forefinger side of the hand. And relatedly, for a lot of us, the weight tends to fall back into the heel of the hand or the wrist. 
and see that there's as much weight toward the front of your hand. So with the weight evenly distributed on your hands, turn your toes under, and then lift your knees and your hips. And that wall that's back there behind you, move your hips way back toward that wall. And we'll take a few breaths here, downward facing dog pose. Now typically we hang the head here to help decompress the neck. So a variation on the decompress the neck theme, reach the crown of your head toward your thumbs. So now your spine is entirely lined up. So keep extending the crown of your head toward your thumbs, yet at the same time, keep moving your hips back behind you. Now with the next out breath, keep your neck long as you bring your gaze a little more forward. Maybe you can feel that the extension occurs from between your shoulder blades, thus earning the term thoracic extension. Holding here for a few breaths. And then with the next exhale, letting your head come down. So now in a moment, we're going to make a similar movement in the spine, thoracic extension. So into your upper back, into your thoracic. Direct the in-breath. And with the exhale, step your feet forward, culminating in thoracic extension, gorilla position. Inhale, folding. Exhale all the way up. Inhale, arm down. Let's do similar movements <clears throat> a little bit faster. Exhale, arms to the side up. Inhale, fold. Exhale, gorilla. Inhale, stepping back, head down, dog. Now, when we do this version of upward dog, for a lot of people what happens is their whole body ends up sliding forward. So that wall back there, keep your hips moving back to that wall. As your hips keep moving back behind you, reach the crown of your head toward your thumbs, forward and in front of you. Now with the next exhale, moving into thoracic extension. A couple of breaths here. Returning to head down dog. Deep inhale here. Exhale, gorilla. Inhale, folding. Exhale all the way up. Inhale, arms down. So now let's take a look at that thoracic extension in standing. So to begin, take your arms forward. Now as you bring your arms forward, let your chest soften back a little bit. Let your shoulder blades wrap around your ribs a bit. Now keeping that sense of your shoulder blades wrapping around your side ribs. With the exhale, sweep your arms up, keeping your head where it is for the time being. So letting your shoulder blades continue wrapping around your side ribs. And now a little bit, let your shoulder blades rise up toward your ears. Your thumbs up there. Reach the crown of your head up toward your thumbs to lengthen your neck. Inhale into your back. Exhale, thoracic extension, taking your gaze up. Holding here for the in-breath. Exhale, arms down, gaze back to horizontal. Exhale, arms forward in front. Exhale, head stays, arms lift. 
Big deep inhale into your back. Exhale, thoracic extension. Inhale, arms down. Gaze returned. All right, so that is the essence of a sun salutation. We do that twice in every sun salutation, whether partial, complete, or somewhere in between. So let's begin with the inhale. Exhale, arms to the side, thoracic extension. Inhale, folding. Exhale, gorilla, here's thoracic extension again. Inhale, folding. Exhale, all the way up, we go from flexion to extension. Inhale, arms down. Two more like that. Exhale, up, thoracic extension. Inhale, folding. Exhale, gorilla, thoracic extension. Inhale, folding, spine flexion. Exhale, all the way up. Inhale, arms down. Stepping your feet wide apart. Turn your left foot in and your right foot out, matching movement to breath. Exhale, bending your knee. Inhale, straightening your knee. Two more like that. The next time, knee in the bent position, pausing there. Hold there for the in-breath. Then tip your hips with the out breath. Taking your upper arm up. And then toward the floor, turn your head and neck. Inhale, fill your back ribs. Use the exhale to connect to your belly. Inhale, coming up and turning back to the front. Second side, turn your right foot in and your left foot out. Exhale, bending. Inhale, straightening. Couple more like that. The next time your knee in that bent position, pausing there, use the inhale to broaden your back. Then with the out breath, tip your hips. And taking your upper arm up and toward the floor, turn your head and neck. Inhale, coming up, turning back to the front, still facing the front, stepping your feet together. So Colette talked a little bit in a different context about that idea of releasing the quads. And for so many of us, the quads and really the hip flexors overall are hiking up. One of the ways that bodies express stress. So how do we release that stress? Well, sometimes imagery can be so powerful. Invite awareness to your left thigh. And imagine that left thigh were to drop out of your rib cage and let that left foot sink into your mat. Yeah, very similar to the imagery you did earlier, isn't it? Now the same thing with this right leg here. Let that thigh drop down. 
Let that foot sink in, submerge into your mat. Then with that sense of downward flow, which is really the essence of posture, improving your posture, then take your pelvic crest and lightly lift them up. Imagine you were a plant, and the soil line was about at your waistline. What's below the soil goes down. What's above the soil line lifts up. So channeling your inner bur oak. By the way, the bur oak, my favorite tree. Big, deep inhale to broaden, open your back. Then with the exhale, feel how downward flow supports upward lift. Lift your branches up. Then inhale, folding. I don't have a good tree image for this movement. Exhale, gorilla. Inhale, stepping back. That wall back there. Take your hips way back toward that wall. See if you can take your hips another quarter inch back toward that wall. All right, so here's the challenge. Keep your hips where they are. At the same time as you reach the crown of your head forward toward your thumb. Keep your hips where they were. As you exhale, introduce thoracic extension into your upper back to take your gaze forward. Let's spend three breaths here. And releasing your head down. Inhale into your upper back. And then exhale, coming down. So let's shift gears a bit. Coming into a seated position. And starting off a plain old ordinary cross leg position. Now in really any posture, not just seated posture, but also sitting in a chair and also standing up. A lot of us are holding our body up from our neck. That's one reason so many people have neck aches and neck stiffness. So the solution, at least the starting point, is to sink your roots down. So in this context, it's your two sitting bones released downward, left one and right one. And let that rooting support lifting. So that's the foundation, but a foundation by itself is not a house. Next step for almost all of us is to release the habitual tension that accumulates in the neck and the base of the skull. So my favorite technique is to imagine the roof of your mouth relaxing. Because if you trace the roof of the mouth straight back behind you, that line emerges where your neck and skull meet each other. And sometimes approaching it from the inside is more effective than approaching it from the outside. Now, some people report they really feel something and they relax their palate. Some people feel like, yeah, I, I, I'm not feeling it. No problem. Either way. Another technique to help release where your neck and skull meet each other is to slightly bobble your head. Let your head be buoyant atop your neck. And the movements don't have to be scripted. Let them be spontaneous. And now letting those movements trail off. Now moving into a spinal twist. Take your left hand across, 
your right hand behind. Now let your head turn. Neck turn. Shoulders turn. And the upper part of your chest turn. Best you can, take your lower ribs and connect them to your belly. Few deep breaths here. And then turning back toward the middle. So a few key points. What's the source? of lifting up what lets an oak tree be tall, its roots. Sink your sitting bones downward to lift your spine upward. I've never seen an oak tree that has tense leaves, but I see a lot of people who have a tense neck. So we're using the roof of the mouth as one avenue to release the neck. And then the other is to make fluid free movement in your skull. And bring your right arm across, left hand behind. Sometimes I'll even continue those little movements as I twist. It probably looks kind of funny, admittedly. Head turns, chest turns, shoulders turn. So we're actually looking to put a spiral in the rib cage. Upper chest turns one direction. Lower ribs turn the other direction. Steady breathing. Full deep inhale. And then exhale back toward the middle. And stretching both feet out in front of you. Now, for a lot of us, in simply stretching the feet out in front, you feel how you're on the back of your sitting bones? That's because your hamstrings are tight. That's not by itself a problem. To help find those roots to get more onto the centers of your sitting bones, bend your knees a bit, however much you need to. And then use your belly to rock up onto the points of your sitting bones. Now, if you'd like a little bit more challenge, explore. See if you can continue using your belly to create this lift. And maybe you can straighten your knees 5% or 10%. Oh, I went too far. See how I rock back? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold over. So whether your knees are really bent, really straight, or somewhere in between. Inhale into your back. Exhale, arms to the side up. Inhale, fold. So this is not that far removed from child's pose. Remember that transition from Colette's session to mine here? Let your spine broaden. Let your spine round. And we'll take a few more breaths here. And then exhale, coming up. Crossing your legs again. This time, have your other leg in front. So this second way of doing it, my body still feels kind of weird, even though I mix it up quite a bit. There's still that one leg cross that feels more natural. But it can be good to work on the other, too, to help keep left-right balance. 
So last time we were here, ran through a number of different steps. So we'll take a few moments quietly here and see if you can recall those steps and then even better, apply them in your body. Then bring your left arm across, your right hand behind. Three deep breaths. Back in toward the middle. We'll pause here. Root your sitting bones down. Let your roots support your trunk, the lift of your spine. Relax your palate. And let your head float atop your neck. Now bring your right arm across, your left hand behind. Head turns. Neck turns, shoulders turn, upper chest turns, but the lower ribs move the opposite direction. And then turning back toward the middle. Taking both legs forward, just like we did before. We're putting a premium on sitting up. So bending your knees if that facilitates. Inhale into your back. Exhale, arms to the side up. Inhale forward. Deep breathing. And then with the next exhale coming up. And then reclining. Reclining however it's comfortable for you. So no need to do it a certain way. And if you feel comfortable doing so, closing your eyes. These are uncertain times. A lot of people are telling me they feel stressed out. So one of the most effective ways to work with stress is to return to your body. And it could be as simple as feeling the surface that you're lying upon. and simply feeling your points of contact. Now that may or may not immediately calm your mind. We have a long history, a lot of evidence that returning to your body Returning to the present ultimately the long game calms the mind.
These qualities of mindfulness doesn't always have to include the body. For example, more than likely, there are sounds surrounding you. Whether it's my voice, the sound of an air conditioner, or bird song. Whatever the sound may be, wherever it's coming from, by hearing the sounds as they are, without judging good sound, bad sound. Simply hearing the sounds can help you return to the present can help calm your mind. If you've closed your eyes, now opening your eyes. And once your eyes are open, returning to sitting. All right. Really glad we could come together today. We have a Q&A session coming up in just a little over 15 minutes. And that'd be a great venue for any questions you have about what we may do or what we don't do, about some of our other programs, like my cardio program, or like some of the equipment classes we have forthcoming. Uh, so please stay on if you can. And if you have to split, but have a question, please do feel free to type it into the chat box. Uh, before we part here, did want to talk a little bit about uh, some exciting programs we have coming up. Please do keep your eyes open for our fall schedule. We're adding some classes and adding some new programs. Super excited about that. I'll uh, be rolling out Mindful Cardio uh, starting in a couple weeks. And by coming together three days a week to do cardio and movement lab and meditation, hoping that that can help us build the resilience and maintain the resilience for whatever we may have coming up as the days get cooler, as the days get shorter, and then, oh yeah, this whole pandemic thing. So really excited to come together as a group so that we can stay active and do our best to stay well. So any comments, questions in the chat box? Okay, so we just put the link in the chat box for the forthcoming Q&A session because it'll be on Zoom and not on YouTube. Okay, we'll sign up. Yeah, and so you'll need to sign up. So follow that link and it will get you where you need to go. Awesome. Great. Thanks for joining us and hope that we can connect soon.